All righty, everyone. So welcome to uh, this week's lecture. It's on understanding METARs and TAF reports, uh, and it is a live Q&A. So, uh, you know, if you've attended one of these before, um, I like it when y'all kind of ask questions and uh, make it kind of a conversation instead of me just talking to myself the whole time. Um, but, uh, you know, if, if anything pops up, feel free to, you know, ask, ask away and uh, we'll get around to it. The agenda for today is going to be, uh, we'll do a little introduction about what a METAR is, understanding what the METAR report is, understanding what the TAF report is, and then we have five questions. Uh, I think I have like seven questions actually, but get a couple questions, a practice questions in, go through those. Um, I also have, I'll show you how to find them on the aviationweather.gov website, how you can practice them and why they're important to, to practice. Uh, from everything that I've been reading, so whenever you, if you're on the Facebook group and you'll see people like, you know, say like, oh, I, I got a 92 on my exam, I pass. Um, and everyone's like, congratulations. If you, uh, if you ever like look, look at kind of what they're saying, it seems like they're saying about 30 to 40% of the exam is going to be METARs. Uh, and they're saying the majority of the exam is sectional charts. So um, since I'm kind of the aviation expert on staff, uh, those are the topics that we cover. And I think we covered METARs about a month ago, but um, that's why we keep hitting it it's because, I mean, this is going to be a large portion of your exam. So it's important that, that we understand these. All right. So moving forward, what is a METAR? A METAR is a, a aviation routine weather report, and it's posted every hour to notify you of the current weather conditions observed at the airport. So this is really important to understand that uh, a METAR is not, it's, it's not a forecast, right? Um, it's, it's just a routine weather report and it happens at that hour. So if the, so the time right now is 7.32, right? If say a METAR comes out right now at 7.32, that means that this METAR is showing, it's, it's just like taking a screenshot of what the weather is at this moment in time, right? And then if you look at the METAR, so, but it's good for an hour, right? So if we, in 59 minutes, so then say it's 8.31, right? At 8.31, if we check the METAR, that METAR is gonna be 59 minutes old, right? And so it's important to realize that uh, that it's it's just a, a, a screenshot into time, right? So that's why they're hourly updated, right? So you might as well wait for the new weather to come out in a minute, right? Um, weather can change a lot in an hour, right? So that's why uh, it's important to to make sure that we we know uh, what time, obviously. But obviously, there's also corrections, right? And we'll talk about that here in a second. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through one METAR report. Um, we'll just kind of break it down uh, bit by bit. But uh, the first part of the METAR is the report type. Um, so if you can see my cursor uh, right here, it says METAR. Um, so like I said, METAR hourly reports comes out once an hour. Uh, they also have SPECI reports. Um, SPECI is kind of short for special. It's a special report. Um, the reason why that a special may be, uh, a special report may be required is that, like I said, you know, it's good for an hour. So have you ever had it though, where you're going outside, it's a beautiful day, and then within five minutes, it's like thundering storm and it, it's, it's, it's all windy and everything, and it just changes in the blink of an eye, right? Uh, weather does that, right? Weather can be really unpredictable and changes a lot. So they have to update, they have to update the METAR with a thing called special METAR reports or a SPECI. Uh, SPECI reports are unscheduled reports that are used to update a METAR report when there are significant changes to the weather in between the hourly report. So if you see anything but METAR here, you know it's an updated report. Um, so there's actually three types, uh, oh, sorry, two types. Yeah. So METARs and SPECIs. That's, that's all there is. Uh, next we have the station identifier. So in this example, uh, you have a uh, Kilo Golf November Victor, which is, uh, Gainesville airport in Florida, Gainesville, Florida airport. Uh, Kilo stands for, uh, whenever you have a three letter airport code, uh, if it's all letters. So for example, this is GNV. Uh, you, if it's in a, a U.S. airport, it'll have a K in front of it, so it'll be K, G, and B. Uh, if you go down to Mexico, it'll have like Mike Golf November Victor. So if there's like a Mexican Gainesville airport and their code is G and B, it'll be Mike like M G and B. Uh, we were just talking about the airport in Maui. So airports in Alaska and uh, Hawaii start with a P, Papa. Um, I think it's for Pacific is is why they they do that. Um, so I can, Canadian airports start with the C, um, why we're a K, I don't know, but don't let it throw you off. Just a K, K G and B. Uh, also if the airport identifier has numbers in it, so say it's like zero nine golf, uh, you don't put a K in front of the zero nine golf. I don't know why it's probably not that important, but just fun fact. 
Um, all right, moving forward here. Uh, here we have the date and the time. So the date and time starts with the uh, the day of the month and it's followed by the time in Zulu time. So uh, here we have the uh, 20th day of the month and it's 1953 Zulu. Uh, if you don't know what Zulu time is, uh, it's just Greenwich Mean Time, which means it's the time zone that's in England. So whenever we're flying, uh, when aviation is always running Zulu time. And the reason why they do that is because if you fly between one time zone to another, you want to make sure that you're all in the same time zone. So they just said, we're just going to make the time zone in England, uh, which is which is Zulu time. If you have trouble with that, don't get too in-depth on it. They're not going to test you on it. Uh, if you ever want to convert it, you can just Google Zulu time converter. Uh, and you, there's a conversion factor for every single time zone. So Eastern Standard Time is five time zones behind Zulu time. So it's minus five. Not that important, but just know that the, the first two numbers are the date. So the 20th day of the month. And then 1953 zoo is when it comes out. Typically, meat stars come out about 53 minutes past the hour. Uh, yeah. All right. Next, we have the station modifier. So there's two types of station modifiers. You have auto and a core or for corrected. So uh, station modifier tells you if the report came from an automated source or if it's a corrected report. Sometimes uh, you don't see this much, but I was flying about I was flying last week and we were looking at the meat star and all of a sudden it said core and I was like, oh, like there you go. Uh, it does happen. So uh, for these for these reports, meter reports, someone's not sitting there and taking the report, right? Uh, they're automatic reports. They're coming out. Uh, it's automated, right? So sometimes aut automation does mess up, right? And uh, and they have to correct the previous report. So uh, that that is a correct report. Neil, what's up, man? Neil's been in a couple of these. All right, wind. So the next three uh, digits are going to be the wind. Uh, and it's always in relation to two, true north. So you'll see that on some uh, on some questions, they'll try and trick you, right? So the first three digits will tell you the direction from which the wind is blowing in relation to true north. So in this example, you have 240 at 15 knots. Um, so 240 would be like a southwesterly heading. Uh, 270 is west and 180 is south, right? So if you just think about like the degrees of a circle, 270 west and then 180 south. So you know that 240 is going to be some sort of like southwesterly uh, wind direction. Uh, and it's true north, followed by the type of wind and then the speed of knots. So it's 15 knots. Um, sometimes you'll see like a little G there and they'll stand for gusting. So if it's 15 G25, that means 15. And then it, there's gusts up to 25, meaning that the highest recorded uh, wind gusts are going up to 25 knots. So don't let that throw you off. Not that big of a deal. All righty. Uh, next with visibility. Visibility is reported in statue miles or SM, which can either be shown in the form of a fraction or a whole number. So in this instance, you have three quarters of a statute mile for visibility. Uh, in aviation, the only thing that's going to be in statute miles is visibility. Everything else will be in nautical miles. So for example, when you look at sectional charts, right, and the questions are, you know, how far out does a class delta airspace go it goes out four nautical miles right uh what's the difference between nautical miles and statue miles uh nautical miles go six thousand feet and statue miles are five thousand two hundred eighty i think they're a little bit smaller so a nautical mile is a little bit longer uh is it important um no just know that visibility is in statue miles and that's the only thing in aviation that's gonna be statue miles uh yeah so in this quarter you have a three quarter in this instance you have three quarters of statue mile visibility um, so already you can tell that, uh, you know, it's, it's not that great of a day, right? We have bad visibility and it's a little kind of windy, right? So as we, as we go through it, right, these are the questions that you want to be asking yourself, uh, you know, uh, passing the exam obviously is, is great when you, when you pass the exam and you get your certificate, that's awesome. That's why you're here. But at the end of the day, you're going, you're learning this information so that you can go out and, and use it practically. Correct. So, uh, you know. Be checking me on you're wondering, should I go fly a drone today? Right. And you're starting, you're starting to see all this stuff. Three quarters of statue mile visibility. Can you go flying your drone when you have three quarters of a mile uh, visibility? Uh, no, you can't. So, but anyway, uh, moving on. Um, weather. So here uh, you have all sorts of METAR codes. Um, so for example, in, in this instance, you have uh, some sort of modifier. So the modifier in this instance is the, the little plus. Uh, so the plus means heavy. And if you see a minus, it means light. And if there's nothing, it's just normal. 
So in this instance, you have uh, TS. TS stands for thunderstorms. RA stands for rain. And then next you have BR. And BR uh, is a French word. It means brem. Uh, brem is a French word for mist. Uh, the way I think about it, though, is I go baby rain. Baby rain is mist. So uh, you have so you have you don't have heavy thunderstorm, right? That doesn't make sense. But it's heavy rain in a thunderstorm, uh, and then you also have mist, right? Uh, so as you can tell, based on the previous one with the visibility too, you have three quarters of statue mile visibility. Uh, so low visibility. Why do you have low visibility? Well, the mist probably isn't helping and the fact that there's a freaking thunderstorm going on and there's, there's heavy rain. Yeah, your visibility, your visibility is not going to be great. So it is, this looks like a, a, a nice summer day in, uh, in Gainesville, Florida with a nice uh, thunderstorm in the evening. Actually, no, it's like the middle of the day. All right. Uh, next, you have sky conditions. Uh, broken, 900. Overcast, 1,100. Uh, and then CB it stands for a cumulonimbus, right? So uh, all of the, when, when the sky condition is always reported in, uh, in feet, hundreds of feet. So it's broken 900 feet, and that is an AGL altitude. Um, the easiest way to remember to think about that is it, they're not going to give you an MSL altitude because say your airport's at 5,000 feet, right? you you wouldn't have broken clouds at 900 feet. That doesn't make sense, right? It's it, a METAR is, is at that specific airport. And so what it's doing is it's, it's the, the way it works is it's shooting a beam up into the sky. And then whenever the radio signal is like received back, that's how it knows how high that the clouds are. Um, so in this instance, so it's all AGL is my point. Uh, so it's broken at 900 feet, overcast at 1,100 feet, and you have CB, cumulonimbus clouds. Uh, cumulonimbus cloud is just another way to say rain cloud. So that's why you also have uh, the heavy, uh, the thunderstorms with the heavy rain over here, right? It's because you have that, that rain cloud, the cumulonimbus. Uh, so there's four types of identifiers. You'll have few, scattered, broken, and overcast. And the way that all of those uh, work with, within uh, a METAR is it's describing how thick the layer of the clouds is. So few means that only one to two eighths of the sky is, is covered. So few, as what the name would suggest, is there's only a couple, like a few clouds in the sky. Uh, as the, the sky becomes more and more covered with clouds and it becomes scattered, right? Scattered means three to four quarters, or sorry, three to four eighths of the sky. So just about under half. If over half the sky is covered, then that's what you call a ceiling, okay? And a ceiling is broken and overcast. So broken means that it's pretty much covered, but there's a couple spots where you can kind of get through, uh, where you can like see kind of holes of the sky. Uh, broken would be five eighths to seven eighths. Uh, it, and don't, you don't have to really worry about that, uh, uh, about the numbers. Uh, the, the, the most important thing is that you, you understand that broken and overcast are what's called ceilings, a, a cloud ceiling. And you'll see that term sometimes uh, uh, on your exam. Don't let that throw you off. And then overcast, as it would describe, is the entire sky is covered. So that's eight out of eight portions of the sky is covered. So those are the four types of identifiers. Uh, next, you have temperature and dew point. Uh, the air temperature and dew point are always given in whole degrees Celsius. So uh, why do we need to, first of all, what is the dew point? The dew point is the uh, point at which the air becomes uh, completely saturated with moisture. Uh, what's another way, uh, like what's another word for air that's saturated with moisture? We call those clouds, right? So uh, pretty much it's at what point does it become completely saturated with moisture? Uh, typically, if you look up like at the sky and if you see clouds are starting at one altitude, uh, typically, that's the altitude at which the temperature equals the dew point because that's where the, the, the moisture is condensing. Um, so whenever you're within five degrees of the dew point, uh, you, the kind of weather that you can expect is, uh, is you know, fog, mist, uh, visible moisture, right? So in this example, uh, I mean, that makes sense, right? Because the temperature is 26, two points 25. What do we have here? We've got baby rain, right? And baby rain is mist, right? So that's probably why, uh, I mean, the, that, that's explaining why there's, there's mist. Um, it also helps explain why the visibility is pretty crummy, right? Um, so uh, just a big picture there. 
Next, we have the altimeter setting. So uh, for, for drone flying, the altimeter setting isn't that important. Uh, if, if you're in a manned aircraft, uh, you know, this is this information would, uh, you know, correlate more to in-flight operations as necessary to set your altimeter to the correct pressure. Uh, it's not that important. Don't get too hung up on it right now. Uh, if you transition one day to, to manned aircraft, then, uh, then we can talk about it. But for now, don't worry about it. It's not going to be tested on your Part 107 exam. Okay, and lastly, we have uh, the remark section. So the remark section always begins with uh, RMK. Uh, in this instance, uh, so a lot of times you'll see some funky stuff in, in the remark section. Not all of it is the most important. And I'll, I'll show you what I mean. I mean, I've been doing this for uh, the past like six or seven years, right? And uh, I still sometimes come across stuff in the remark section where I'm like, hmm, well, that doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. But there is stuff that you do need to know um, as far as like the basics. So here we have uh, the remarks section. We have uh, TS, which stands for thunderstorm, right? So as we talked about earlier, TS. And then we have a B. Uh, the B stands for beginning, right? So what this is saying is that the thunderstorms began 32 minutes past the hour, right? So the hour is 1953. So at 1932, right? Because it's just 32 minutes. At 1932 uh, is when the thunderstorm started. Uh, and it, it's, it would be 1932. It, it, it can't be 2032, right? Because that's in the future, right? So it, it, it's just letting you know that the thunderstorm began 32 minutes past the previous hour and the rain RA also began 32 minutes past the previous hour. Uh, so before we, let's see what the next part is. Yeah, so we have some examples here. Uh, what I'm gonna show you before we get to the examples is I'm gonna show you two things. Uh, one, you can just go to like METAR codes. You can just Google METAR codes and there, there's, a, there's a PDF here. Uh, from the National Weather Service. So what I'll do is I'll take a I'll take this and I'll throw it in the chat um, if you want to follow along here. So here's the link. I threw it in the chat here. And uh, so when I talked about here with the, the heavy thunderstorms, the, the rain, and the the br, the brem, the, the the baby rain, the mist, uh, you know, you'd be, you'd be like, wow, like that's that's all sort that's all sorts of stuff, right? Like how how do you keep track of all that? Um, and do I need to know all of them? And the answer is no, you don't need to know all of them. Uh, they're not going to test you on all of this stuff, but there are some that you do need to know. For example, rain is an easy one. RA, baby rain, BR, mist, you're going to see mist. Uh, TS, thunderstorm, you're also going to see that. But there's some really fun ones here. So if you're a dork like me and you like just looking at METAR codes, you can find some really cool, cool ones that you may see every once in a while. Um, BL is blowing. Um, I, I don't think I've seen that one before. Uh, but look at that. Here's auto. So fully automated report. Uh, let's see. Is there core? There it is. Look at that core. Look at that correction to a previously disseminated uh, observation. Uh, DOD, Department of Defense. Um, what are some other common ones? Drizzle is a common one. DZ. Um, I've seen that. That comes out. That comes quite, uh, quite often. What else? FG, fog. I've seen that one a lot. Funnel cloud, I can't, I can tell you, I've never seen funnel cloud before. Um, what else is on here? Clear CLR, that's, I mean, obviously you need to know that one. But remember when I said the the RA, the RAB, so like rain beginning 35 minutes past the hour, look at that, B stands for began. So if you ever get confused and say you're like, you're practicing, and I'm gonna show you how to practice these, because the only way to get good at METARs is to, to sit there and practice. It's like anything else, right? Um, the, the more METARs that you look at, the more funky stuff you're going to see. And then the more you're going to have to look stuff up. And when you look that up, that's how you learn, right? You know, you're, find, you're finding the stuff that's like kind of obscure. And you're like, oh, like what is, uh, I don't know. Let's see. What, is, uh, what does LTG mean? Oh, I don't know what LTG is. So then you go and you look it up and LTG means lightning. You're like, ah, no, it's lightning. So when you see it on the exam, you're going to be familiar with it already. Um, there's some really fun ones, though, that I've seen. Uh, spray is PY. I don't really know why. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Um, there's one that's like volcanic ash. I think it's VA. That one's always fun. Volcanic ash. Yeah, so like when I saw this, I was like, oh, like when would there ever be volcanic ash? Uh, it turns out in like 2013 when that uh, when the volcano in Iceland exploded, and there was, uh, it just filled the sky with volcanic ash. Uh, I, I saw those on a METAR. So that was, that was kind of interesting. You're like, oh, like, look, that does exist. 
Um, and that is a, a time when you would see that, but you're not going to, they're not going to test you on that. The funky ones are not going to snow grains. They're not going to test you on that. Snow is SN though. You should probably know that one snow. Um, so yeah, that's that. Um, let's go back to the slideshow here. So I just want to show you that um, there is, there's a document where you can see all the codes. If you ever get uh, confused, uh, you're not going to have access to that on your exam. So like I said, the best way to, to get good at doing METARs is just to, to sit there, find them and practice them. So, all right, here's some examples. Uh, let's go ahead and go through the, uh, I'll go through the first one. And then uh, what I'll do is I'll give y'all a, a chance to go through the second one. And I want you to try and uh, write out the answer to the second one. Uh, or I would like to see someone write it out in the chat, some overachiever. But okay, the first one is uh, Kilo Mike Delta Whiskey. So that's uh, Mike Delta Whiskey is the Midway Airport in Chicago. Uh, it's the fourth day of the month. It's the 1852 Zulu time. Uh, winds are one, two, zero, eight knots, six miles visibility. Uh, if you see six miles visibility, typically that means that it's over. So it'll be like six or more. So if it's, it say visibility is a hundred miles, it'll still just show six. Um, not a fun fact. Uh, light rain scattered at 600 feet, broken at 4,700 feet, overcast at 11,000 feet. Temperature 2.1, 2.19, and altimeter is 2.9 or 8.1 remark. Uh, so we don't have any remarks on this one. Uh, when, we, when we go look at our real life examples, and we'll do that here uh, after the, the quiz questions, um, we'll, see, start, we'll start seeing some funky remarks. Uh, but for these, we're not going to have any of that. And at, on your exam, I doubt the remarks will be any more complicated than stuff that's like rain beginning and stuff like that. Um, okay, here we have the... Uh, the Kilo SLE Airport. What is that saying? I don't know what that is, but go ahead and um, go ahead and like, I want someone to write that out, write out the example on what this report is in the, uh, in the chat. I'll give you, I'll give you a minute here to practice. So anyone in the chat, anyone in the chat, write out, can you write out the answer? Or oh, on Facebook, let's check Facebook. Hey, Derek, glad that you're tuning in from Savannah, Tennessee. That's cool. I don't know where Savannah, Tennessee is. I know where Savannah, Georgia is. It's on the coast. Savannah, Tennessee. Let's go check that out. So anyone, anyone in the chat? Someone write it out. All right. Well, I'll give it a second here. Oh, uh, let's find out where the SLE airport is. Oh, it's Salem, uh, Salem, Oregon. Hmm. The more you know. Cool. Well, this is a this is a uh, Salem, Oregon airport. Um, it's the seventeenth day of the month, nineteen fifty six Zulu. Winds are one eight zero at sixteen, gusting to two one. So that's, there's the gust, right? The gust factor. Two miles visibility, light rain, baby rain. So you have mist. Broken, one thousand feet. Overcast, two thousand one hundred feet. Temperature one one, dew point nine. Altimeters two nine or seven six. Remarks. Hey Neil, you didn't write out the answer, man. You are killing me. Okay, so what is a TAF? Uh, a TAF report gives you an idea of the expected weather conditions at an airport. They're valid for a period of twenty four to thirty hours and updated uh, four times a day. Uh, TAF stands for Terminal Aerodrome Forecast. Oh, you're not slow. Nah, come on, man. You're, you're doing you're doing good, man. All right. Uh, terminal Aerodrome Forecast. So, uh, as the name would suggest, a forecast is for future weather, right? So, uh, the METAR is uh, aviation uh, a, a report, right? It's it's a report at one single time. A TAF is for the future, right? Um, so that's really important. Uh, they're valid for a period of 24 to 30 hours. So that's, uh, you know, uh, they're six hour periods. So that's why it says 24 to 30. And they can either, you can either have four to five periods. So, so right, four times six is 24 or, or, or five times six is 30. So, um, and they're updated four times a day, every six hours, right? Six times four is 24. Cool. Um, report type. So you have this first part, which stands for TAF, right? Uh, so it can either be a, a routine forecast TAF or an amended forecast, AMD, meaning that has been fixed, improved since the last TAF report. Uh, TAFs, I mean, we, whenever it comes to forecasting, right? I mean, we're humans. 
we make mistakes. Uh, tasks are not automatic reports. There's actually someone writing a task. Uh, I mean, they, they take data that's already given to them and then they're just compiling it and putting it together. So humans, uh, humans make mistakes. And when you write tasks, as with just forecasting in general, I mean, you've seen the weather where you're like, oh, it's like a 20% chance of rain. You're like, ah, it's not going to rain. And then all of a sudden it's just pouring all the next day, right? Uh, so mistakes, mistakes can be made. Uh, weather's unpredictable. And, you know, even in the year 2022, we're still not getting it right 100%. You know, uh, weather can be unpredictable. So, all right. Next, you have the station identifier. So this is just the same thing. Uh, this one is a Papa Delta X-ray. PDX, I believe that's Portland, uh, Portland, Oregon, PDX. Let's find out. I think it's Portland, Oregon. PDX. I don't fly to West Coast airports yet. Aha, Portland International. There you go. Look at that. Uh, so same four-letter identifier we saw in the METAR report, starting with a K in the continental U.S. Uh, Hawaii and Alaska are going to be with P's. Mexico is with the M. Uh, Canada's with the C. There you go. Uh, oh, in the Caribbean, I believe it starts with Charlie. Yeah, for Caribbean. I don't know. You have to look that one up. All right. Date and time. So same thing. Uh, you're going to see a lot of similarities between TAF and BSARs. Um, the main difference with the TAF and BSAR is like the forecasting portion of it, what we were talking about earlier. Um, Portland, Oregon. Yeah. Neil, I think you're from like Oregon, aren't you? I think, I think you are. And then, yeah. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Um, yeah, so I mean, the, the main difference between TAFs and METARs is going to be the timing of it, correct? So uh, the timing uh, of, of, a meet, of, a, of a METAR is going to be once an hour, whereas like we said, these are forecasts. So every single line here is going to be a different forecast because the weather is constantly changing, right? Um, so that's why the, the times are really important to look at on the TAF. And you'll see that on the exam, they'll ask you like for a specific time what the TAF is. So you have to kind of disseminate the information and find the line they're talking about. But we'll go through that here. Uh, so first, the uh, the first four digits are the date and time the TAF starts. And then the last four digits are the date and time that the TAF is valid until. Uh, so in this example, you have the uh, Portland, Oregon TAF. Uh, the TAF came out at on the 20th day at 1741 Zulu. But the actual forecast period is valid from the 20th day at 18 Zulu to the 21st day at 18 Zulu. So it's valid for an entire day, right? And as you can see, there's one, two, three, four lines of the TAF, and you have 24 hours right here, okay? Uh, so the first one is gonna be very, uh, well, I guess I'll just go through the slide here. Oh man, and it's got all that. So does it break all, it doesn't break everything down. So what I'll do is I'll break down this TAF and we'll kind of just talk through it here. Uh, so you have variable at three knots right here. So VRB means variable at three knots, um, variable, is typically a code that's seen when the, the winds are really light and they're changing a lot. So they can't actually give it a wind direction just because it's so, it's it's just changing a lot. And if it's changing a lot and it, it's if it's a light wind, then they'll just call it variable at three knots. Uh, here we go. So see, this is P6SM. Uh, that's six miles of statute vis uh, of visibility, but the P is like plus, like plus six. So it's over six, over six miles. So remember I said like it could be a hundred miles of visibility. They're just going to write P6 or plus six. Uh, scattered at 4,500 feet, broken at 6,000 feet, okay? So this period, so this line is good. Oh, this line is good from the 18th Zulu to 18 Zulu. Now, it's saying from the 20th day at 20 Zulu. So really, this first line is only good from 18 Zulu to 20 Zulu, okay? So it's good for two hours, right? This first line. At 20 Zulu, now you're going to look at this line, Okay. So it's gonna say winds are now gonna be one, three, zero, eight knots. So it got a little bit more, it got a little bit more windy. And now we have a definitive wind direction. Visibility is still over six miles. And they're saying that the clouds are gonna drop. The cloud, sorry, they're, they're gonna go up. The clouds are gonna go up to 20,000 feet, broken to 20,000 feet. So now this is good. This line is good from 20 Zulu all the way to 23 Zulu. Cause at 23 Zulu, we have a new line, okay? And this new line is saying at 23 Zulu, the winds are now going to be 100 at 11 knots, visibility is over six miles, but now it's going to be light rain and it's going to be overcast at 4,000 feet. So really between 20 Zulu and 23 Zulu, the, wind, the, winds are, the winds are picking up a little bit more, right? Visibility is still good, but you're going to have light rain and the clouds are really going to drop. They're really going to come down. 
So from 23 Zulu all the way till then. So this is 20th day at 23 Zulu all the way to the 21st day. So now you're going through midnight to the next day. And the next day it says at 5 a.m., right? Well, five Zulu, right? At five Zulu. So you have six hours between this, right? 23 to five. So yeah, so six hours. Uh, six hours later, you're going to get a new uh, a, a new thing. And they're saying that the, the weather is going to change again at 120 at 14 knots. Uh, so the wind's picking up even more. Visibility is going to be six miles. It's still going to be light rain. The clouds are really going to drop down to 2,500. And then you have WS020 slash 190 20 knots. Uh, I'm guessing that WS stands for wind shear. See, like, even sometimes I don't know stuff. Let's find out what WS stands for. I think it means wind shear. Wind shift WS. Okay, maybe it's just the example. It's a poor example, but let's see what it says. Yeah, so W, so a oh, wind shifting zero to zero, at, at zero, from zero to zero to one nine zero. So really, I think that should be uh, WS and then HFT. So wind shift. So I, I think that's actually incorrect. It should say wind shift, but whatever. It's, not, not, it's just the example. Uh, so they're saying that the wind is now changing directions. All right. So and then this this line here from 5 a.m. This 5 a.m. line is good all the way through 18. Because remember, the, the forecast period is through 18 on the 21st day. And we're only at 5 a.m. on the 21st day. So you'll see that this forecast period is good for uh, at least 12, 13 hours, 13 hours, that last line. Uh, don't let that confuse you, you know. Uh, just break through it and uh, remember, uh, you know, if, if I tell you, okay, you're going to look for the line that's at 22 Zulu, right? Well, we know 22 Zulu is going to be, uh, it's after 18, it's after 20, but it's before 23. So we know it's going to be this line. That's how I do it is I, I just go line by line and try and figure out which, which line my forecast period's in. Uh, and then remember, so this is 24-hour forecast, but guess what? It's going to be updated in six hours anyway. So this came out at 1741. So in six hours, uh, it'll be 20, uh, 2341. So it'll be almost midnight. And uh, that's that's when it's updated. Oh, I apologize. All right. Um, so it, it's always it's always uh, updating itself. So we'll kind of talk through that. Uh, this is the body of the TAF. It's going to be a long string of numbers reporting the conditions, similar to the METAR report on things like wind visibility, sky condition, other expected weather. TAF reports only include cumulonimbus clouds. Um, yeah, I mean, you're not going to, it's, it's not going to like specify any other type of cloud besides cumulonimbus. Okay. Uh, common acronyms, uh, PROB40 is probability 40%. Uh, VCTS is in the vicinity of, FM is from, and P6 uh, statue miles is greater than six statue miles. So uh, you'll see those a lot. And like I said, we'll go through some. Woohoo! Man, oh man, doesn't doesn't that just look fun? All right, let's let's go through this. Let's go through this line by line. So, and I'll I'll kind of talk through this pretty quickly. If you have any questions, throw throw it out. Uh, we're doing good on time, but still. All right. Midway Airport, uh, out of the fourth day of the month, 1744 Zulu. Uh, the forecast period is good from the fourth day on the 18 Zulu to the fifth day at 18 Zulu. So we have 24 hour forecast period. Winds are 220, eight knots, six miles of visibility, light rain, vicinity uh, in vicinity of thunderstorms, uh, TS thunderstorms. So uh, in the vicinity of thunderstorms. Uh, scattered at 600, uh, cumulonimbus. So that's going to be the rain clouds. Broken at 4,700, overcast at 11, uh, at 1100. Now you'll see stuff like this, okay? And really, this is really this. This slide is incorrect. This the slide should look like this. Hold on, can I? That yeah, that's what it'll look like. So okay, so you'll you'll see where it says like tempo, right? Tempo means temporary. Uh, so now it's saying it's a temporary forecast. So from so while this forecast period is good from the fourth day of the eighteen Zulu to the fifth day at eighteen Zulu, the temporary is good from the fourth day at eighteen Zulu to the fourth day at twenty Zulu, right? So only for these two hours, right? Is it gonna is is they're saying that this is gonna be the temporary uh, uh, tap, and they're saying it's gonna be four miles visibility, showers of rain, broken eight hundred. Uh, oh man, it's it's incorrect again. I'm sorry. I didn't I didn't proofread this one that well. I guess. Um, but uh, uh, from the fourth day at twenty one Zulu, uh, or sorry, so temp so it's saying temporary from uh, fourth day at eighteen Zulu to twenty Zulu. Four miles of visibility, showers of rain, broken eight hundred. Uh, now, here's the thing: if we go to twenty one, so say you say you go to forty, say say you're trying to find where 
the tw- uh well, I, I guess it doesn't do half Zulus, but I was gonna say like like 2030 Zulu, right? So it's like 2030 is at 830 Zulu, right? If you're going to 830 because it's past the, the 20th hour, but it's not the 21st hour yet, you're now reverting back to the first line, if that makes sense. Um, I know that can seem kind of kind of crazy. So so this is from the 18th Zulu, 18 Zulu to 20 Zulu. Okay, so you're you're doing this line. Between 20 Zulu and 21 Zulu, you're going to go back to the original line of this. And because what this is saying, this temporary is saying that it's going to temporarily change the original line for these times, the 18 to 20. But if it's outside of those times, then it no longer changes. That makes sense. I feel like that, that can be a little confusing. Um, and then we keep going. So this is from fourth day at 21 Zulu. You have ones two. Two four zero at nine knots. Uh, it should say plus six statue miles visibility. You'll never see plus five. Uh, vicinity is a shower. Uh, showers rank uh, in the vicinity. There's showers uh, scattered at one thousand feet, broken twenty five hundred feet, overcast six thousand feet. And then it says on the fifth day from zero Zulu, you have two seven zero at eight knots visibility, six miles scattered twenty five hundred, broken six thousand. Uh, on the fifth day at three Zulu, you're gonna have three zero zero at one zero visibility, six scattered twenty five hundred, broken six. From 050 at six, uh, the six Zulu on the fifth day, 320 at eight, visibility over six, few at 2500, scattered at 6000. Uh, from starting at 14 Zulu on the fifth day, you're gonna have 340 at 12, six, mile, six miles visibility, scattered at 6000 feet. Uh, so I'm kind of rattling through it. That's just because uh, I've done this a lot, right? I, I like you get used, you get used to it. it. It seems all big and bad and complex, but really it's, it's just, you got to disseminate, like you got to find the information that you're looking for. And so they're going to tell you what time to look for. So then you just have to be able to find within the report where that time is. So if I say, uh, I want to find out what the weather is at 2 a.m. Zulu time, right? So we know 2 a.m. Yeah, it's, it's in this period. Let's see, it's not in the temporary period. 2 a.m. 2 a.m. is after 21. 2 a.m. is after zero. 2 a.m. is before three. So we know it's going to be right here. And this is going to be the line that applies to us. So just take it step by step. It's not too bad. All righty. So what we're going to do is we'll, we'll do some questions here. Uh, we'll go through the top five questions. And then we'll do some examples where uh, I'll show you how to practice. So let's go ahead and uh, get these questions in. Uh, question number one in the METAR report, what does BR stand for? Neil comes out guns blazing, says the answer is a Leonardo, says the answer is missed. Yep. Uh, remember, uh, oh, wait, yeah, why'd you say A? Neil, no. <laughs> uh, the answer the answer is missed. That's right. Remember, baby rain. There we go. Yes, sir, baby rain. That's what it is. Uh, the answer is missed. Okay, cool. Uh, question number two, the only cloud type forecast for a TAP report is, what do we got? A, scattered cumulus, B, cumulonimbus, or C, nimbostratus? B, nice job. Cool. All right. So here we go. What is the forecasted wind for Memphis from 16 Zulu until the end of the forecast? Ooh. What do we got? Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? Well, we know the well, we know the airport's Memphis, right? So uh Memphis is gonna be this top one here. Uh 16 Zulu. So uh let's start off with the report here. So we have 18, 18 to 24. So we know 16 Zulu is gonna be uh it's after 18, 16 is gonna be after 22, after two, becoming. So this is becoming saying it's becoming uh the weather's changing, becoming this. And that's from 10 to 12. So we don't have to worry about that. And then here at the bottom is the 16 right so this is from the 13th day at 16 zero this is variable at six knots visibility six miles and scattered clouds right so the answer is b variable wind in the direction of six knots does that make sense to everyone and i think everyone answered that did y'all say or did y'all say b from the last one no y'all said b from the last one no one answered that one the answer is b variable wind in the direction of six knots does that make sense all right uh the wind direction and velocity at jfk is from and then uh, thank you for the feedback, Mar- Marcia. I appreciate it. 
Uh, the wind direction and velocity at JFK is from A, 18 degrees true at four knots, B, 18 degrees magnetic at four knots, 40 knots, or C, 18 degrees magnetic at 40 knots. Leonardo comes out and says A right away. The wind direction velocity at JFK. So here we have JFK, we have the specky JFK. 12th day of the month, 1853, Zulu winds 180 at four knots. A, A, yep, you are correct. Half mile visibility, fog. Uh, it's at runway four. Uh, ooh, I, I'd have to look that one up. And then overcast 500, temperature 2018, temperature 3006. Um, cool. So it's saying the velocity is A, 180, 180 degrees true at four knots. Remember, uh, the wind is always true. It's always from the true direction, not magnetic. So that's important too, because as you get, uh, as, you, as you come into areas with more like magnetic uh, variation, uh, you, you still want your wind direction to be reported to you as, as the same thing. Because when you get up in the, the, the higher you know, latitudes and more on the West Coast, there can be really big deviations between magnetic and uh, true. All right, cool. What should you expect if you see a Nimbus cloud? What does Nimbus mean? Leonardo says A. Neil says C. Marcia says A. So actually, the answer is, in fact, A, uh, precipitation. Uh, nimbus is the, uh, is the prefix for, uh, or I guess the suffix for, uh, for rain, a rain cloud, right? So uh, it's the, the cumulonimbus is actually just a rain cloud. Uh, the, actually, if you watch Rick and Morty, they have like Mr. Nimbus. And Mr. Nimbus is a uh, water character who has uh, precipitation and as part of his character. Anyway, not important. All right, next, uh, the weather report list of the cloud ceilings at 700 feet. What is the highest you can operate your SUAS? if the clouds are at 700 feet. So I know this doesn't have to do with METARs, but it's the greater picture, right? Because if we see that, you know, as long as you can see that there's a ceiling at 700 feet, say it's overcast 700 feet, what good does that do you if you don't know the rules, right? So the answer is in fact, and Leonardo and Marcia both got it right, the answer is 200 feet. So we can fly our drone uh, 500 feet below uh, below clouds, right? 500 feet below clouds. So if you're operating at 700 feet, right? 700 feet, uh, or sorry, the, ceil the, the ceiling is at 700 feet and you can operate 500 feet below it. Seven minus five is two, so 200 feet. You can fly your drone up to 200 feet. Cool. <laughs> it's all good, man. Next time, we got more of them. Uh, question number 12, segments uh, are issued as a warning of weather conditions, hazardous to which type of aircraft? Uh, once again, I know this isn't METARs and this isn't TAFs, but uh, SIGMETS does have to do with the weather. Uh, a SIGMET stands for a significant meteorological event. Uh, the FAA uh, issues SIGMETS uh, to, uh, to, you know, I guess that's the answer. I don't want to give the answer away, but uh, the FAA issues SIGMETS and they tell aircraft pretty much uh, whether or not. Um, you know, what, what, what hazards are in the area. Typically it's thunderstorms or turbulence. Um, but the answer is C, all aircraft, right? So everyone got that one right, good job. Um, segments do not just apply to, uh, to, to airliners, right? Or they apply to small airplanes like Cessnas. And they also apply to y'all as a drone pilots, right? Uh, you have your aircraft, an unmanned aircraft, right? So that does, that does apply. All right, here we go. Uh, what is the valid period of the TAF for Cayman, Memphis? What's the valid period of the tap? Well, we got a little bit, a couple of mixed answers here. So it says for figure 15, Memphis. So if you look up here where Memphis is, 12th day, 1720 Zulu, and it's good. The forecast period is on the 12th day from 18 Zulu to the 13th day at 24 Zulu. So really the answer should be uh, 18 on the 12th to 24 on the 13th. The answer is in fact, Charlie, C. There you go, nice. Cool. So uh, now we'll do we'll do a little Q and A. Um, you know we're coming up on the hour mark. 
uh, what, you know, if you have any questions, you know, throw them out in the chat. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys where to find METAR. So you can go to this website called aviationweather.gov and aviationweather.gov is like the official FA website. And I'll throw that in, or it's the official like website for aviation weather. Um, and I just sent the link in the chat. Let me check the Facebook, make sure I didn't, I didn't miss any questions on Facebook. Uh, Derek, hope, hope you're, uh, you're following along here on Facebook. Um, so what I'll do real quick is I'll show you. So here uh, you'll see on the main page, it'll say like METARS, right? And you can click on METARS and then uh, it'll show you like a little map of the United States. And, uh, but down here it says request METAR data. So, um, uh, you know, that's a good question, uh, Leonardo. Leonardo asks, uh, when they say vicinity, how close is that? Ooh, I want to say it's within like four nautical miles. I don't actually know. Um, and I will get back to you. And yeah, actually at the end of this, I'll look it up at the end of this. Let me keep going with this, uh, running with this. Anyway, so here you can request the meet our data. So someone give me an airport of where they're from. Um, I know Leonardo said he was from Maui. I think it was Leonardo. Uh, I don't know what the, uh, the airport code is for Maui. I looked it up earlier. Let me see what it is real quick. Um, I feel like... Uh, P H O G. Okay. Look, let's go ahead and look it up. Uh, so I think I looked it up earlier. So P H O G. Uh, so here you have, um, all right. So I'll get to that in a second here. Uh, so P H O G. So you have raw and decoded. Um, so what I usually do is, is in order to practice, and this is how you practice, right? So hit raw and then time most recent only, and you can include the tap actually. So since we, we talked about taps today, so I hit include tap most recent only, and I get, get me to our data. So I click it. It says here, so PHOG is the, uh, I think it's like the Maui airport. Uh, it's the second day of the month, right? Uh, at five, at 54 Zulu. So that just came out, 54 Zulu. So that came out uh, 18 plus six, 24. That came out 24 minutes ago. Uh, winds are zero to zero at eight knots, 10 miles of visibility, scattered at 3,500 feet, temperature 272.18. Altimeter 299 or eight, remarks AO2. AO2 means that it, uh, it, it's able to receive uh, precipitation information from the reporting station. Not, not important whatsoever. Uh, sea level pressure, 158, uh, not important. And then uh, it says T, has, I, don't, I don't even know what that is. So like I said, you can see some funky stuff in the remarks. It's not a big deal. All right, here's the TAF. So it's saying uh, this came out on, uh, on, so this came out yesterday, well, today uh at 2332 zulu so this, this is about two hours old and this is saying that this is good from the second day so uh zulu time at zero zulu to the second day at 24. you cannot see messages what do you mean Dwayne? that you can't see messages um anyway uh so here it says uh so it's it's good from zero zulu to 24 zulu so it's a 24 hour taff winds are zero to zero to 11 knots uh visibility is over six miles few 3,000 feet, scattered 5,000 feet. Then what it's saying is it's going down here is it's saying from, so 8 a.m. So this is now starting at 8 a.m. Zulu time. It's not local time. You'd have to do the conversion factor uh, to find out what the local time is. Anyway, 120, five knots, visibility six miles, a uh, few 3,000 feet. Here it says the second day starting at uh, 20 Zulu. Uh, 20 Zulu is saying that it's going to be zero to zero at 11 knots, six miles of visibility, few at 3,000 feet, scattered at 5,000 feet. Looks like you got a nice day ahead of you in Maui. Um, like I said, man. So anyway, so if, if you ever get confused, though, the way that you practice this, this, so this is the raw. So it, it literally just gives you the information, like as it is, the raw information. If you hit decoded, you can hit decoded. And now it literally tells you temperature is 27.2, deep, two points this. It like, it breaks it down for you and tells you what everything is. So if there's ever something that you don't understand, you can just hit the, the decoded and it will spell it out for you. Like it will line by line, it'll tell you what everything means. So this is how you practice reading METARs and TAPs. All right, I'm gonna go back to the comments here. I'm gonna read everyone's questions because uh, I know you guys have been asking stuff. So says vicinity, how close is that? Like I said, I'll look that up at the end. All right, then any questions about hot or cold fronts in the test? Yeah. Yeah, there'll be questions about it. Um, I think the practice tests have questions on them. So you can go check this out. How come it doesn't say plus six, Statue miles about uh max plus six statute miles, but it says 10. Uh, because that's the METAR. The METAR says 10, and 
the Tafts say plus six. Why it says that? I'm not sure. I don't know. Maybe it's just because like there's no difference forecasting between like what's the difference between six miles visibility and 10 miles visibility? I don't know. But if you like with a forecast in the future, right? But if you're making an observation at that point in time, then you can clearly tell that it's 10 miles visibility. I don't know though, because you're never you're never gonna see like 15 miles visibility on a METAR. It'll only go up to 10. So I don't know. I don't really have a good answer for you on that. Uh, I just know that the plus six SM is on TAFs and the 10 is on uh, METARs. Uh, you say you cannot see the messages, the link. I don't know what link. Are you talking about aviationweather.gov? I just clicked on it and it works for me. So I don't, I don't know, man. Uh, anyway, so uh, one thing that's really fun to do is you find like the, like the part of the country that has the worst weather. Yeah, I, I don't, you can just Google it. Like try Googling it, Dwayne. Um, the, the link worked for me. I just clicked on it. So, uh, but you can just Google aviationweather.gov and it'll come up. So um, what I, so what I like to do is I like to find the word, like the part of the country that has the worst weather and then go read those tabs. It's kind of fun to do. So uh, I'll just like type in like radar of the United States. Here's a radar. Okay. So let's see where in the U.S. there's like bad weather. Oh yeah, look at this. Woohoo. There's there's all sorts of stuff going on in the uh, northeast tonight. So it looks like Pittsburgh is just getting clobbered, right? Johnstown. We'll look at we'll look at Pittsburgh. So let's look at the, the Pittsburgh Pittsburgh Metarn tab. So that's gonna be K Pit. Oh, I don't want it decoded. I want it raw. Okay. So K Pit, uh, this is saying the second day of the month at uh, 0051 Zulu. So this came out uh almost 30 minutes ago. Okay. Uh, winds are 320 at 12 knots. Uh, so that's not too bad. 10 miles visibility. That's not bad. Broken 7,500. Overcast 11,000 temperature, 7 dew point 2. So it's within five. So you're going to start getting the drop in visibility. But it looks like the visibility is fine. Hmm. All right. Here's the TAF. So it's saying on the first day, this came out at uh, 2320 Zulu. Uh, from the second day at zero to the third day at six Zulu. Uh, winds, uh, three, two, zero, 10 gusting to 20. Ha ha. So there's, there's the weather, right? Getting gusty up to 20, six miles of visibility, light rain overcast 6,000 feet. Uh, and then it looks like in the forecast, it really doesn't get anything worse than just light rain. Ah, that's, that's, that was anticlimactic. That's not, that's not good. All right. Let's see. Where is this like storm going to hit? Maybe, uh, oh, it looks like New York's getting kind of, well, Let's check out Boston. Boston's going to get some snow. Oh yeah. Look at that. Boston's going to get clobbered. All right. Let's, let's check out, let's check out Boston. Maybe that one would be fun. Okay. Okay. Boss. I need to go. Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for attending Marcy. I really appreciate it. I wouldn't, I would, I wouldn't be able to do it without you guys. So I'm glad, I'm glad that y'all are here. It makes talking to myself more fun. Okay. Here's Boston. Uh, uh, zero two zero. Uh, oh, sorry. Second day of the month, 54 Zulu, winds 180, 15 knots. So 15 knots, that's like decent wind. 10 miles visibility, light rain, few, 1,500 feet, scattered 3,700 feet, broken 7,500 feet, overcast 25,000 feet, temperature 3, dew point zero. Altimeter remarks. Um, oh, it looks like lightning. So PC, PCPN, varying lightning. I see, man, this is, see, like, this is like where you like learn stuff. Metar codes. Let's like look up what that one is. PCPN. So PCPN precipitation. Okay. PCPN varying. I think I think it means varying. V R Y. V R. Uh, visual range. What's the Y mean then? VRB is variable. Yeah, I don't know. You get some fun stuff. But we remember LTG is lightning. So there's going to be lightning in the area. So that's that's fun. Uh, all right. Here's the TAF. Second day at uh, 0102 Zulu. From the second day, 01 Zulu to the third day at 6 Zulu. Uh, 18015, six miles of visibility. Here's light showers of rain. Uh, a few 1,500 feet, sky 3,500 feet. And then looks, you get more light showers of rain. Uh, here's the vicinity of showers. VC, VC showers. VC SH. VC is 
vicinity, right? Yeah, in the vicinity, and then Estacia showers. Yeah, in the vicinity showers. So, uh, nothing too exciting, I guess. <sighs> Varying is very, allegedly. Oh, is it? Varying is very. Preci precipitation, very lightning. Ah, that doesn't make sense. You're yanking my chain. I don't know. All right. Well, that's pretty much a lecture. Um, like I said, I could just go on for do another example, but that's pretty much it. If you have any other questions, uh, let me know. I like doing these. These are fun. Um, maybe Portland. I wonder if like, Portland's getting worse weather. What is that? Uh, KPCW? Portland. Is PCW Portland, Maine? I think it is. Mm, 10 miles of visibility. Mm, not that good. It's not that bad. Well, that's that's Portland. Uh, that's Portland. Uh, you're in Portland, uh, uh, Oregon. Yeah, I mean, I, I can do Portland, Oregon. Okay, PDX. Hey, y'all are free to go. Um, obviously, you always are, but that's pretty much the whole lecture. Not doing anything too much more. Mm, you said it's light rain. That's not what the meteor says. But remember the meteor is just over the airport. You're probably not, you're probably not just on the uh on the uh on the airport. You're probably, you know, 10 minutes away from the airport or something. Uh oh, but look at that. Here's the here's the TAF for for uh for Portland. It says uh light showers of rain. Looks like light showers of rain pretty much for the next day. Is it like Portland known for just like always raining though? Isn't isn't that like part of the shtick of living in Portland? All right, here's Bismarck. I kind of want to find out what Bismarck airport code is. Bismarck uh, airport code. Let's see what that is. Biz. Oh, come on, Sam. You should have known that. K-Biz. Uh, R. So to answer your question, uh, sometimes, uh, Leonardo, to answer your question, uh, METARs and TAS are used worldwide uh, from what I know. I mean, for every, everywhere that I, so I've, I've only flown in Canada and Mexico and the Caribbean, and we always use TAFs. Uh, I want to say it's worldwide because IATA is the international, or sorry, ICAO, International uh, Civil Aviation Organization, ICAO. Uh, they've standardized everything. So, you know, a pilot here can go fly in South America, and for the most part, everything uh, is the same. All right, this will be the last one. Here's Bismarck, uh, second day of the month. Uh, 11 14 Zulu winds 1304 knots, eight miles visibility, light rain scattered. Ah, that's not exciting. Okay, here we go. Uh, but it does have all sorts of forecasts here. Uh, looks like you're getting uh, they're gonna have light rain tonight, and then it's gonna go. Here's a temporary, uh, it's gonna be five miles visibility, freezing rain, light freezing rain with mist. Yeah, and then here's here's more mist in the vicinity of showers and bay rain. Let's let me google that real quick. Um, how far is vicinity for a guitar? Oh, here we go. Look at this. This is geographical. Oh, it's a download. Geographical area for which the TAF and meet are defined. And they're saying that the definition of vicinity is between 8 and 16 kilometers from the aerodrome reference point. Aerodrome reference point is the middle of the airport. Um, oh, look, there's a, there's a whole uh, dock here. Oh, my goodness. Here, I can share my screen. Uh, pretty much there's just a whole, uh, yeah, between eight and 16 miles. So, oh yeah, it's IK, it's an IKO document. All right, well, what's, what is eight and 16? Let's do, let's do like kilometers to miles. So we said eight, eight is five is 4.9 miles to 16. So it's gonna be double that nine. So between five, between five and 10 miles is the, the, the short answer for that. All right, y'all, it's been fun. Um, I'll see y'all next week. Uh, oh, let me check Facebook real quick. Make sure I didn't miss anything on Facebook. Um, Yeah, feel free to give me a holler. Uh, yeah, nothing in Facebook. Feel free to give me a holler uh, in the Facebook group or send me an email. Uh, you should have my company email on the on the Facebook group. Uh, but once again, thanks guys for attending. Um, I really appreciate it. So y'all have a good night. Yeah, thanks, man. Thanks for coming.
Aloha. Yes, sir. All right, I'm going to go ahead and end it. See you, folks.